Welcome to Case of the Week, Ovarian Mucinous Cystadenocarcinoma. I'm Dr. Dan Koble from Radiologist HQ. Let's take a look at the case and then I'll go over some key learning points at the end. So let's start with this transabdominal ultrasound of the pelvis here. This is a transverse view and this was a younger female patient presenting to the emergency department with abdominal pain. So here we have this large cystic mass within the midline pelvis, and you can see that there are some scattered low-level echoes within it, somewhat dependent. So initially you might wonder, could this be an endometrioma? Could this even be the urinary bladder with some layering debris? As we move in fairly though, you can see there's this lobular soft tissue within the mass, and it's also quite complex with these irregular thick septations, somewhat confluent solid components, and that becomes even more complex as we move to the inferior aspect of the mass. Here's this rind of thick soft tissue, it's echogenic, and you're seeing also some posterior acoustic enhancement here as the sound waves travel through the cystic component of the mass. On the sagittal images, you can really see that solid component there, as well as these scattered low-level echoes. And as we move right to left, we see more of the mass, large and complex. Here are these irregular thick septations throughout the mass, as well as some solid echogenic components. Now, the mass is extremely large too. Here, it's 18 centimeters in super inferior dimension, about 12 centimeters in AP dimension, and on transverse images, we get about 13 centimeters. Now, let's take a look at the vascularity of the mass. So here we're using power Doppler, which is more sensitive than color Doppler for detecting flow. And we're looking at a transverse image, and you can see these multiple areas of internal vascularity. Throughout the solid components of the mass, notice in the cystic areas, you don't see any flow. And as we move through the lesion, we're seeing extensive vascular flow, particularly in these irregular thick septations. Whenever you're evaluating flow in a suspected neoplasm, it's a great idea to also add spectral Doppler to confirm that this is actual true flow and not just artifact like twinkle artifact or even flash artifact. And here we do see this low resistance waveform confirming that this is true vascularity. And that confirms our suspicion that this is a neoplasm and the overall appearance is highly suspicious for malignancy. Now the patient went on to have an MRI of the pelvis. So these are axial T2 weighted images on the left and T2 fat suppressed images on the right. You could tell that these are both T2-weighted images because the fluid in the spinal canal, the CSF, is bright, and simple fluid will be bright on T2-weighted images. Note how the mass also contains T2-bright fluid, that's the cystic component. Now, with any ovarian mass, you also want to see if there's any areas of fat suppression within the mass because that would indicate the presence of a dermoid cyst, which is the most common ovarian neoplasm. Dermoid cysts contain macroscopic fat, which is the same type of fat that we see physiologically within the subcutaneous tissues here, and that will be T2 bright and also T1 bright. But when we add fat suppression, the signal from that is nulled, so it will become dark, but then the fluid-containing areas that are also T2 bright remain T2 bright. So the fact that we don't see any fat suppression within this mass tells us that this is not a dermoid cyst. We do see these irregular thick septations and also other areas of T2 hypointense amorphous debris, and some of that becomes more solid appearing as we move to the inferior aspect of the mass here. And there's that rind of soft tissue that we saw previously on the ultrasound. There's also part of the left ovary that we're seeing. The inferior aspect of the mass appears even more solid and confluent. These are T2-weighted coronal images, and there's that left ovary again, and it's getting partially effaced by the mass here, this complex mass. But notice how we don't see a definite claw of ovarian tissue around the mass. If we saw that, it would suggest that the mass was arising from the left ovary. A normal right ovary was not seen on MRI, and also at surgery, this was found to be arising from the right ovary. But you could see just how large the mass is extending superiorly, and the more complex aspect is in the mid to inferior components. A midline sagittal T2-weighted image is a great way to look at the pelvic structures. You can see the extent of the mass filling the pelvis all the way up to the L4 vertebral body level. There's anterior bulging of the rectus abdominis muscle, and then we're seeing that urinary bladder getting partially effaced along with the uterus. There's the endometrial stripe and the hypointense junctional zone in that left ovary again. Returning to axial images, these are T1-weighted images, and you can see the CSF in the spinal canal is dark. The subcutaneous fat is bright, but then on the fat suppressed human weighted images, it becomes dark. And again, we don't see any areas of fat suppression within the mass. It looks similar on both the T1 and T1 fat suppressed series. But what do you see? Well, there are all these alternating areas of T1 darkness and T1 brightness of varying degree, giving kind of a stained glass appearance to the mass, which is typical for mucinous tumors. Thick mucin will tend to be T1 bright, and watery mucin tends to be T1 dark. And these are all variable degrees between the levels of viscosity. These tumors also tend to contain hemorrhage, cellular debris, and other proteinaceous elements. All right, let's conclude with post-contrast images. Here's a T1 fat suppressed post series. You can tell we've given contrast because the iliac vasculature is enhancing normally. 
So we're looking for any bright areas within the mass to determine if there's enhancement, which would indicate a solid component. Now this area is a little bright, right? Is that enhancing? Well, if we look at the pre-contrast T1 image that we saw earlier, this area was bright to begin with. So how can we evaluate that? We can look at subtraction images. So subtraction imaging is a technique where we take the unenhanced human weighted sequence and through post-processing digitally subtract it from the identical sequence performed after contrast. So that's very helpful for lesions like this where you have this intrinsic T1 hyperintense signal. It removes that, removes any pre-existing T1 hyperintensity. So anything that's left bright on the subtraction image is truly enhancing and anything black is not enhancing. So you can see that area is actually not enhancing. It's just some protonaceous or mucinous debris. We do though see these irregular areas of septation thickening, some confluent soft tissue inferiorly that becomes more solid. And there's that rind of irregular soft tissue demonstrating true enhancement. There's the correlative comparison image from the ultrasound we saw earlier. And the base of the lesion is totally solid with this mass-like enhancement. So let's look at some key points for mucinous cystadenocarcinoma, which you can also find in the episode show notes. So this is a type of epithelial ovarian tumor, and it's a rare malignant tumor. Can you name any other epithelial ovarian tumors? Yes, serous, mucinous, endometrioid, clear cell, and Brenner tumors. And these mucinous tumors are often very large at presentation. They might be enormous. And they're almost always multilocular, as in this case, they have multiple septations, and within these loculi, there is often mucinous, protonaceous, and hemorrhagic material. And that gives it this appearance on ultrasound that we saw with these scattered low-level echoes. And sometimes that can be difficult to differentiate from endometrioma. Endometrioma more specifically is described with the term homogeneous low-level echoes, meaning these echoes are diffusely throughout the mass and more homogeneous. You also shouldn't see vascular solid components within endometriomas like we saw in this case. This material gives us that stained glass appearance on MRI with variable areas of T1 and T2 signal, depending on how thick that mucin is. Really thick mucin will be T1, T2 bright, and more watery will follow fluid signal. And how do you differentiate this from the benign mucinous cystadenoma? Well, if you see irregular thick septations and solid components, as we saw in this case with internal vascularity on ultrasound and enhancement on MRI, that will point more towards a mucinous cystadenocarcinoma. Let me give you a quick summary on how to differentiate mucinous tumors from serous tumors, another type of epithelial ovarian tumor. So serous tumors are more common than mucinous. Serous also tends to be unilocular, whereas mucinous is multilocular, as in this case. Serous tumors are typically smaller than mucinous tumors at presentation, whereas mucinous tumors are often massive. You can see what I'm doing here with the M's for mucinous. <laughs> Serous tumors are more likely to be malignant, about 40% are malignant, whereas only 20% of mucinous tumors are malignant. Serous tumors might be bilateral, whereas that's uncommon for mucinous tumors. You might see some momentous calcification with serous tumors, particularly the low-grade serous cystadenocarcinomas, but calcification is rare with mucinous tumors. When you do see it, it tends to be mural and linear. When serous tumors metastasize, you see peritoneal carcinomatosis. That can also occur with mucinous tumors, but uniquely you can also get pseudomyxoma peritonei when mucinous tumors rupture. And those are gelatinous metastases that tend to scallop the surface of the liver. So just to summarize there, mucinous tumors tend to be multilocular, massive. When they calcify, it's mural and pseudomyxoma peritonei when ruptured. So remember the M's. Thank you very much for joining me for this case of the week. If you like this lecture, please subscribe to the video podcast or on YouTube. To see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, click the YouTube community tab or follow us on social media. Until next time, radiology is life.